Oh, cute. Puss, 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 puss. Hiya, cat. Hey, you are, whiskers. You're all sleeping in that place, aren't you, eh? Oh, cute. Hey, you're a cheeky cat, aren't you? Look at you. Oh, it's happy. Oh, cute. Good day viewers, well I'm also doing a video on my uh, demand air meter. I haven't got a chance to video my uh, time switches yet. But this is, uh, I've already had a look at it. The little tempest here was very easily broken off. I was surprised how easily these uh, plastic anti tempest was come off. Basically what this does, you pull it down, and that just resets it. Basically how it works, that red needle moves, and when it gets to a peak, it, there's some um, a silver needle retains its position and shows the demand or the max amp the circuit used. As you can see there, it was re, uh, recertified and tested in 1986. It only goes up to 8 amps, so it probably would have been used for the, maybe a primary or some sort of control transformer or something at a substation. The um, casing is based on a Robert and Frankie WF2 model. Watt hour meter, the model prior to this one, which would have been made in the late 50s throughout the 60s. The window goes down here, curves around the bottom, and you have your specifications plate in the load wall here, and there'll be an arrow here. That's the only major difference. If I look carefully, the uh, actual display, the um, fascia is that muffin shape, that Sangamo muffin shape, so they've kept that shape of this uh, meter as well. It's a yeah, model WF70, as I said, I'll take the terminal cover off and see how it wires up. I already had a go at wiring this up off camera, and I think this might need some sort of CT, I'm not sure. Shouldn't they be an 8 amp meter, but I, I, I'm not sure how this would have uh, worked. It's my first time with a demand meter, so... Be very careful how to get these bloody things off. For some reason, this terminal cover is just stubborn. Just pause the camera. Yeah, see, I've got the uh, proper watt hour meter um, terminal cover. So you must have goes in series of load, obviously. And they're plugged off. We just want these two terminals here. These aren't uh, molded in, you can see. Uh, probably I guess I reckon it would be early 60s this particular meter, maybe the 50s this would have been actually made. Or a baker light in glass. I suppose I could wire it up and see what it does but I probably won't do anything as I said earlier. It may need a CT so let's see if it does anything without a CT. Okay, have you always got a test meter, smart meter, phase going in, phase coming out through the meter, the amp meter, and phase out to activate into the power point. Let's put a load on. First, we're going to stand this thing up so it's upright in a correct position so they can see it work. Right, I'll plug that in. A bit hard to do with one hand and the power point's not secured. Alright, it's plugged in. Smart meter's on. I wonder if the actual um, uh, communications module is working. Because it's not coming up on the screen, it's being connected. But I did notice before the. Um, there's an LED in there that, that, that shows that it's on. As you can see, it's a green LED in there. Turn this bloody light off. There you go, power's on. So we're also getting power of that. But the smart meter won't pick it up as uh, connected. Alright, let's put that back on. Let's put a load in this and see if we can uh, get that meter to advance. I'll set this up. Now the oil is turning on low, so it pulls less than 10 amps. I want to max out this meter. Power on. Doesn't seem to work. OK, 
Okay, maybe this does require some sort of CT. That's me doing. All right, power off. All right. Hmm. I'm going to start doing some time switch videos. This is a Landis and Gaia model. Oh, no, uh, there's a model number on this one. There you go. Type KYA1Z15.1. Time switch number A8262. Meter number EM34045. Property to State Electricity Commission of Victoria. To set it at 50 volts. 15 amps, 50 cycles per second. Landis and Guy, SA Zug, Switzerland, but assembled in Australia by GW Engineering Limited, Sydney. There you go, produced in Australia. So we've got the uh, criminal warning sticker. Here's an offence to remove seals, interfere with this equipment. It was last certified 982. And again, this breaks so damn easy. There's a uh, cheap pair of temper seals that just turns and comes off. And you can, uh, this actual cover comes off, and you put these little screws in, and that's your, um, you set your time. It is a 24 hour um, time switch. Torch here, if I can find it. 056 sitting on it. Very nicely made instrument. Got the uh, O rings in good tact, uh, in good nick, it's all intact. So that's a dust seal. I've already wired it up. So I just had a quick test off camera. And it did work. It did um, self, uh, it actually self winds. The escapement was actually working when I turned it off. So This switch shouldn't need any pulling apart and uh, lubricating. As it would have been done in 1982 when it was refurbished. So clock winding, that's a motor. And the yeah, here it goes into your, your lake changer on this side. Alright, let's put this cover on and we can power it up. Alright, let's power it up. Okay, this is an old baker lock case, so no, no earthing issues. Alright, I did the rain boombox deluxe trick, just held it up like that. On the table, power on, it powers on. Huh. Not even moving. So very efficient, these little switches. You can hear it better now. And you can hear the escapement being wound up by the motor. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up in there. Just see something moving, the escapement. Just see it moving. We're on the 11 o'clock daytime. That's your indicator there, your hour. So when it gets to, so it's got a, I think this is your on, so on it, set, uh, on, on, uh, hang on. This is on here. So 23 is on, 11 o'clock, check rate, and off at seven in the morning. So that's your off trigger, number two. So let's go on this way. So it's on its way to the, on. So 11 o'clock, so 23 there. I just quickly power it off. And the escapement's working. There you go, put the camera light on. Power's back on. Can you see the escapement moving? And then I'm not going to open this one up. And there you go, you can see it a bit better by the camera's light now. So half an hour is that big line, so 15 minutes, if I, if I get it right in the hour, and time it for 15 minutes or half an hour, see how well that keeps time. Being um, a lattice and guy, and it was refurbished, so it should be accurate. Let that go for a bit and see how well it keeps track of its time. Okay, viewers, it was quarter to 12. I'm going to plug this in. And so far, so good. It's advanced 15 minutes. Beautiful. Just so far, so good. It's accurate. Yeah, 
there the escape there. Leave it on for longer, get it all the way uh, round up. Then we can give it a cosmetic cleaner, give it a dust off and polish it up. Remember this time switch all done. Very good quality stuff. Alright. Let's do a roll over to one killer whatever on the um Sang my Slumberger, what a meter. Works quite well as a meter from my computer. Okay, have you always got the heater on low? 5 amp load. Try 10 amp load. Alright. Very carefully. Oh, bit of a skip, but it always does it when you first turn on it will skip, then it will, it will advance properly. I've noticed that with these types of meters. There we go. One kilowatt hour. There you go. Okay, if it was half an hour, it's already run out of um, tension on the spring there on the escapement. If I leave it on all night for a couple of, or, or a couple of days, it will build up, uh, it get its full um, wind of its spring reserve. And the escapement should last, I think it lasts about, about a week. My Venna, when I um, got off eBay, that lasts about five days on the escapement. And that seems to keep check of time quite well, and that was refurbished in 81, so let's give this thing a bit of a dust off and feel the shine. Okay, if there was a light dust over with a dry towel, it seems to have come up well. The escapement's going again. And there's the back of the meter, it's a nice high quality uh, thick baker light, a metal hook. It will stand it back up, we can plug it back in and let it um, wind up its escapement um, spring reserve all the way. Still getting over my bloody hay fever, my nose is still clogging and runny, so... Alright, I'll get this set up properly. Power on. There you go. And there's the little escapement going. I think um, Raymond, Rod right Aircat 2007, has a very, very similar time switch to this. I've got an another one I showed in the uh, Megascore video. That's an uh, earlier model, but with a steel case and it um, doesn't have any anti tamper seal. So I'll open that one here up and show you the inside of that one. They're very well made, these uh, time switches. Very well made. They're very common back in the, um, before they had the uh, Nielsen AMS. Because PowerCore got rid of all these and replaced them with Nielsen EMS 2600. Um, I showed one of those in the uh, Neighbours Smart Meter install video. And that did the metering and the time switching as well. So for some reason PowerCore never liked these sorts of time switches. They've always got rid of them and replaced them with those um, digital Nielsen ones. Uh, Nielsen ones. But it's a good thing I was able to get these of SPOS net. These two are becoming increasingly harder to find and are rarer than the uh, email meters. So if you get a chance, grab some time switches as well. Alright, if you also let that go and wind its spring reserve all the way up. So, thanks for watching.